Good morning, United Church of Hyde Park. We are reading today from the Gospel of Mark. We have been here for a few weeks, and today we will continue in chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. You can turn to your Bibles, or you can just close your eyes and listen to these words. On that day, when evening had come, he said to them, let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with them. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped, but he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care? that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased and there was dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of God's word. Today I'd like to focus on the theme, pushing your faith, pushing your faith. A couple of weeks ago I was in the market for a queen size box spring. The box spring was delivered to my personal home. The delivery didn't include putting it in my bedroom on the second floor. I had a deadline in which I was working to get the box spring safely in my room. I determined that I was going to get that box spring from the first floor to the second floor. I spent some time mentally with myself because I knew more than physical strength. This was going to take both spiritual and mental energy. energy. I screwed at the frame in the plastic all the way up to the steps. I worked the springs up step by step, celebrating each step along the way. But it's halfway up when the steps turn that became the sticking point. It's at this change where the box springs need to be lifted straight up in the air and turned in order to fit up the remainder of the stairs. Now mind you, at this point I am breathing much harder, I am sweating profusely, and I am successfully stuck. I keep breathing and I keep trying to remember the exercise I did at the starting of this project. I try to remember the talk that me and God had with one another. I tell myself quitting is not an option. I go back and forth. I go to the bottom of the box spring, crawling underneath it, trying to push it and angle it. I go to the top, trying to pull it up just a little bit more. I do this several times. Now, you know, this story does have a happy ending. I made it, but not without being stretched. I made it, but not without being taxed. I made it, but not without being stressed. <laughs> I made it, but not without being pushed. I want to talk to you all this morning about pushing your faith, pushing your faith. Sometimes things don't go our way. Life doesn't deal us a winning hand. We catch all the red lights on our way sometimes. You know how sometimes you start out and every red light seems like it's got your name on it. We end up on dead-end roads and one-way streets. We are traveling up a river going against the current. We feel like we are losing at the game of life. A significant person is lost on the chessboard of life. We get lost and we can't find our way home. We have more bad days than good days. We count our blessings and we still come up short at the cash register. We worry about how things are going to work out. It takes twice as long to do the things we used to could do with ease. It's harder to put one foot in front of the other. We can't catch a break. We find our faith being stretched. 
This is where we enter the biblical text today. The disciples were in a boat and the waves were violent. The wind was pushing the boat and the waters. Water was coming into the boat. The boat was being tossed around. All of this was unsettling to the disciples. As the winds were coming, this unsettling of the boat and the waters caused much more water to enter the boat. The gospel artist says the storm is passing over. The storm is passing over. Glory, hallelujah. The storm is passing over. But the disciples, the disciples said, "Uh uh-uh, this storm ain't going nowhere. And the winds were not calming down. They could see the winds weren't going anywhere. And water kept being splashed into the boat. Now, it had already been a long day. They were trying to get somewhere and rest. They had had more people than they ever had to show up to listen to Jesus. And Jesus had ministered and poured out of him everything that was in him, teaching in parables. We learned on last week the parable about the seed that grew and grew. And when he was empty, he had suggested to the disciples that they move on. We got nothing more for you all now. We've we've given it all. And they had left in a boat. And now Jesus was good and tired. You know that kind of tired that you're so tired that you fall asleep with your head on the way to the pillow you fall asleep before your head hits the pillow and there he was sleeping silently and while all of this was going on around Jesus wind gushing and water splashing and the boat being moved around Jesus was sleeping and the disciples did what many of us do when we get pushed the disciples did what many of us do when we find ourselves in a tight situation they woke Jesus right on up look at here Jesus Look at here. We know you're napping and we know you work mighty hard today, but we got a situation. And Jesus does three things. He assesses the situation. He speaks to the wind and the sea. And then he turns to the disciples and he asks them this question. What are you so afraid of? Have you no faith? I sit that at your feet this morning for careful consideration. No one is looking. What are you afraid of? Have you no faith? The disciples found their own faith being pushed that day in the boat. James Cleveland, the father of gospel music, sung these lyrics years ago, and they are still reached out to the soul of humans today. So you've been sick. Tell me about it. And you think that you can't get well. Where is your faith? Where is your faith in God? Say you're in trouble. Tell me about it. And you're going to court next week. Where is your faith? Where is your faith in God? You say you're out of work. Tell me about it. And all your bills are due. Where? Where where is your faith? Where is your faith in God? And so he goes on with a few more refrains of this. Where is your faith? Where is your faith in God? While it's not good to oversimplify the social ills of our times and what is happening in us and around us, I wonder, people of God, where is our faith? I do ponder this question Jesus posed to the disciples. What are you afraid of? Have you no faith? What is happening to the people of God? Where where is our faith? And especially through the pandemic, I've been wondering where, where is our faith? Happy Juneteenth. Just for clarity, the Emancipation Proclamation declared no slavery for this country. It was issued to date, September 22, 1862, as well as January 1, 1863. The proclamation declared that all persons held as slaves within the rebellious state are and henceforth shall be free. This proclamation was estimated to change the lives of over more than 3.5 million slaves. The document and the war would lead to the emancipation of all slaves eventually. But freedom did not come to Texas in 1862 or 1863. It didn't come until June 19, 1865, two years later. And thanks to number 45 last year, many of you learned what Juneteenth was all about. But it's still hard for us to talk about race. It's still hard for us to really have a hard conversation about the impact 
of racism and the scar that it's left on this nation. It's uncomfortable. It's really, really uncomfortable. It pushes our faith and so often we avoid it because we might learn some things that would really make us feel uncomfortable. We might have to hear anger. We might have to hear hurt. And so often we avoid it because it makes us uncomfortable. It's much easier to be nice Christians, right? Like the disciples, our nation has really witnessed that this storm has not passed over. There's another uncomfortable topic facing our congregation and maybe our world. How do we confront the spiritual entanglements of this world? How do we address the spiritual malnutrition present in our country? Yesterday, our congregation held a small town hall meeting to talk about the activity that happens on our lawn, not just at 9 a.m. and 2 p.m., but at 8 p.m. at night. Yesterday, our congregation held a meeting. The next meeting is July 31st, 10 a.m. I'd love to have 75% of our congregation here to talk about our lawn. But yesterday, we learned, maybe reinforced some things, that we have real problems, and perhaps that makes us feel uncomfortable. I think it does. I think that's why we haven't done anything thus far. One member shared that I think maybe we have a discomfort with the color of the skin of the folks on our lawn. We learned yesterday that the later it gets, the worse our lawn problem gets. We learned we have drugs, maybe gang presence, on our lawn. We were told about the mental health issues facing our community on our lawn. And yesterday, we learned that whatever we do, it will take more than a town hall meeting or one-time stop to address the social ills of our community. We also learned, though, that we are more powerful together, working together in our community than any one person alone. Yesterday, we met more people in our community and learned names and faces. And yesterday, our church can be proud we hosted a space for all kinds of people to talk and listen to one another. Some voices were angry. Some were mentally ill. Some, I thought, were over the edge. Of course, we didn't totally agree with each other, but we heard each other, and we listened to each other. There is a real opportunity for our Church United to work with our community towards making our space and making this community safe and pleasant, not just in the daytime, but all the time. We have a real opportunity to not just show up on Sunday and sing our praise, get our praise on and get our spiritual tanks full and experience community and go home. We have an opportunity to be community on Monday through Saturday as well. I was so proud of the members that did come out, but no mistake that if we take seriously our call to be in this world, our faith is not only being pushed, but it will be pushed. There are real elements in our world. There are real spiritual strongholds. Our faith, I believe, is being pushed to be God's church, not just on Sunday, but being the church in this world every day of the week. A friend of mine was in a car accident recently. She went through treatment, but during COVID, kind of, her abilities got more limited. She started feeling pain in her body. She asked the doctor for a shot. And over the last year, he's given her a shot as needed. But this last time she went into the doctor and said, I'm experiencing pain, can you give me a shot? He shared with her, I can give you this shot, but what you really need is to push your body. He referred her to physical therapy. And so off to physical therapy, she went begrudgingly because most of the times we don't like to be pushed out of our comfort zone. That's why it's called comfort in the first place at all, right? Because it's comfortable and we don't like to be pushed. And so in therapy, she goes twice a week. She's getting pushed and she don't like it. It hurts, it's painful, it's hard work because she's being pushed out of her comfort zone. But a week ago, she was able to walk to the beach without pain. And she was able to walk to the beach because she had herself been pushed. She didn't appreciate that being pushed, but she liked the results of being pushed. Sometimes when our faith is pushed and stretched, it takes a lot out of us. We don't like it. We get grumpy. Why me, God? But for God's people, 
if we are faithful and we lean into the pushing and the stretching, we find our faith is even stronger than before. We can come out and we can do real ministry in the world and we can do real ministry right on our lawn. Today I began with me and a box spring. Of course, there's more to that story. If you call me up, I might tell you a little bit more about it. But at the hardest point of moving the box spring, I said to God, I recognize you are pushing my faith. But I knew that God was with me and I knew and I know that God is with God's people. And I know that God is with you, even when you don't feel like it. Sometimes when our faith is pushed, it's hard. It's hard. It's exhausting and we don't appreciate it. And it's definitely uncomfortable. It makes us afraid. We can see the totality of the problem and we feel like, what can we do about it? Well, we can see the totality of the problem on our lawn. And sometimes that feels like, gosh, we just want to give up or pretend or just look the other way. We can get real low about the things that happen to us and about the things that are happening in our world. But we are not alone. There are way more good people. And there are way more people of faith that call God by a different name. We have God and we have each other. And Jesus is always in the boat. Even if Jesus is asleep, Jesus is in the boat with us. We can breathe and we can pause. And when we get stuck, we can pray. Say, God, I'm stuck, but I know that you're with me. Essentially, today, our work in the world will push us. If we are to really be the church that Christ is calling us to be, we're going to get pushed. We're going to have to come out of our comfort zone. And fear may knock at our door, and it's okay to be afraid as long as you don't operate or have that fear pushing you. Jesus steals the storm, and God invites us to the violent waters of our time. God invites us to the violence of our times, and we don't have to be afraid. Amen. <laughs>